So my name is Brett Nelson, and we're from the Department of Emergency Medicine at Mount Sinai here in New York City. And today we're going to be speaking about bedside ultrasound of the gallbladder, focusing on a couple of major questions when assessing the gallbladder. Probably the two most important ones are there stones, and is there a sonographic Murphy sign? So let's have a brief uh, discussion of the anatomy first. We're going to look at the uh, liver in general, and the gallbladder exists beneath the right lobe of the liver and between the right and the uh, quadrate lobe of the liver, basically in the gallbladder fossa. So you can see, looking at it from underneath, that it's going to be basically underneath the, the bulk of the right lobe of the liver. And uh, there are some connections that are important that are going to help us to identify where it uh, exists. We're going to talk about some surface anatomy in a minute, but I'd like to focus for a moment on the, um, the fundus of the gallbladder being out here towards the bottom of the screen, uh, tapering down into the neck. And notice that the gallbladder sort of points towards this large purple structure here, the portal vein. The portal vein has a uh, right side over here and a left side over there, and it uh, combines to form the main portal vein for a brief period of time, right around where the neck of the gallbladder is. So one uh, anatomic relationship that's going to be very helpful, if you follow the landmarks that we're going to discuss in a moment and you can't find the gallbladder, just uh, think of the gallbladder, <clears throat> the right and the left portal vein, forming a shape sort of like holding your three fingers together like this. So you have the uh, left portal vein, the right portal vein, and the gallbladder. Now you won't find them all in the same plane at the same time, but if you imagine that they're all sort of pointing towards the same space. So if you fan back and forth through what would be your first knuckle here and find the left and right portal vein meeting up together to form the main portal vein, you can then start fanning out your ultrasound plane from that area, uh, finding the gallbladder itself coming out from there. Analogously to how you would uh, find the uh, the fundus of the um, uh, of the eye by tracing the retinal arteries and veins back towards their source. So let's talk about the technique. Um, typically, we're going to hold the probe at the costal margin at uh, around the midclavicular line. And most people describe doing a costal sweep where they have the probe in a longitudinal or sagittal orientation, sweeping from left to right along the costal margin, and that can help you find the gallbladder in many cases. Um, in my experience, I find that the, um, the gallbladder is often obscured below the costal margin by a patient with a lot of bowel gas. And in patients who are heavier, it's a little bit difficult to get through the skin and soft tissues to find the gallbladder. So um, while the costal sweep um, approach is helpful, I think understanding where the gallbladder sits uh, is a little bit easier to find it using a slightly different approach. So gallbladder is going to be found about seven centimeters from the uh, xiphoid process. And a couple people in the ultrasound community like to think that it's uh, X minus seven. Um, so seven centimeters away from X or the xiphoid process. So start with the probe there. Um, you can also start with the probe in between the ribs, uh, especially if a patient's heavier or they have a lot of bowel gas obscuring your view. So instead of trying to image directly into the gallbladder, then you'll be using the liver as a window. Um, and it's fairly straightforward to find some portion of liver parenchyma and then tracing the portal vein back to their origin at the left and right portal vein, finding the main portal vein from there. So basically, if you can't find the gallbladder right away, I usually give up, move towards looking to, for the liver, and then try to find the gallbladder having looked for the liver instead. So um, again, using the liver here as a window, which is a lot easier to find. So again, the way that I typically do it is I start in a, in a transverse orientation. Uh, seven centimeters away from the xiphoid process, I'll place the probe uh, with the probe marker towards the patient's right-hand side. And then I'll fan up towards their head, down towards their feet. And I would say 90% of the time, you'll find the gallbladder right around that general area, using the liver as a window and typically going in the um, intercostal space. So here's a pretty normal view of the liver in what's often referred to as an ex exclamation point sign, where we see the point of the exclamation point as the portal vein, the middle hepatic ligament sort of connecting the two structures, and then the gallbladder forming the top part of the exclamation point. So <clears throat> we can see here the anterior and the posterior walls of the gallbladder uh, demonstrated pretty well. And just keep in mind how crisp and sharp that anterior wall looks, because that's where we're going to look for gallbladder wall thickening later on. The liver here acting as a pretty solid window uh, since it's organ dense. It's letting the ultrasound energy transmit through very nicely. So this is the main anatomy that we want to locate. So again, here's another normal gallbladder demonstrated longitudinally with a uh, portal vein below it.
So there can sometimes be a little confusion with respect to uh, terminology, uh, long and short axis, uh, transverse longitudinal. When people speak about the gallbladder, they're typically speaking about the orientation of the gallbladder itself. So depending on how the patient's gallbladder lies in their body, um, their gallbladder's long axis may actually be a transverse slice through the patient. So um, keep in mind that uh, a long view of the gallbladder is one where you can see the fundus all the way up to the um, the neck of the gallbladder down into the portal vein, and a short view of the gallbladder is going to be basically a transverse cut through the gallbladder. You may need to orient your probe in different ways to make those views happen, and it may not correspond to how the patient is being sliced through with the ultrasound energy. So let's look at the major findings that you'll see in cholecystitis. Fever, increased white blood cell count, these are clinical signs and symptoms, and then gallstones and a sonographic Murphy sign. Um, there are other signs in addition, we'll speak about them later, but uh, even if you're first getting the hang of using ultrasound to look for cholecystitis, these are relatively low-hanging fruit. They're, they're re reasonably sensitive and specific, especially when you combine all of them. So um, imagine that uh, if you can just detect whether a patient has a sonographic Murphy sign and whether or not they have stones, if you combine that ultrasonographic data with data you're getting from your clinical assessment, you can actually go pretty far towards ruling in or out cholecystitis um, and fairly rapidly at the bedside. So what does cholelithiasis look like? Well, stones are very dense structures, and that density change in between the um, bright density of the stone and the anechoic uh, area of the surrounding bile is going to cause a huge density change, and that density change is going to create a shadow. So the ultrasound beam encounters soft tissue, and then it encounters fluid, and then all of a sudden, very different from fluid, this bright, bright echoic area that is going to uh, cause shadowing down. So you can either look for the bright areas or the shadows coming down from them or both, and that's going to be a sign that there's a stone inside the gallbladder. Here we see another gallbladder in a longitudinal view, again, long for the gallbladder's perspective, where we see the fundus up here towards the neck down here, a large stone or group of stones here, and we only really see the anterior leading edge of it and then shadowing coming down behind it. The portal vein is visible towards the left-hand side of your screen, and there's some debris or sludge inside of the gallbladder itself. Stones normally should be free moving. Uh, if the stone or a suspected stone isn't moving, it could suggest a couple of different things. One, it could be an impacted stone, and two, it could not be a stone at all, it could be a polyp. Uh, both of those things are, um, are worth considering when you have a stone that doesn't move around. So in this particular patient's case, we see that when the patient's laying supine, the gallstones are um, laying on the gravity-dependent area at the posterior aspect of the gallbladder. When the patient was rolled over into a left lateral decubitus position, the stones were again in a gravity-dependent area. So these were freely moving stones within the gallbladder in a patient who had cholelithiasis, but no other signs of cholecystitis. So I mentioned the sonographic Murphy sign a couple of times. So what exactly is that? Different than the regular Murphy sign where palpation in the right upper quadrant causes arrest of inspiration. So the patient is sort of breathing their uh, inflamed gallbladder down into your hand so they stop breathing. Um, sonographic Murphy sign is a little bit different. When you visualize the gallbladder underneath your ultrasound probe, pressure there is the maximal area of tenderness. So very many times patients with acute cholecystitis or a painful biliary colic episode are going to have diffuse abdominal tenderness or diffusely around the right upper quadrant epigastric area. So typically you place the probe in a couple different locations and say, does it hurt the most when I press here or here or here? And if the most tenderness is elicited over the visualized gallbladder, that's a sonographic Murphy sign. There are some people who have uh, dis uh, described that you need to demonstrate that the gallbladder is actually being deformed a bit by the amount of pressure you're placing on it. Um, some people find that's a necessary component of the sonographic Murphy sign and others don't. So what other findings can we see in acute cholecystitis? Gallbladder wall thickening, and that is generally defined as greater than three millimeters. Some authors use up to four millimeters. A dilated common bile duct, and typically greater than six millimeters is described, and most authors agree that in older patients, from the sixth decade and on, you get another millimeter per decade. So that would mean that you can get up to six millimeters uh, uh, gallbladder, um, common bile duct uh, diameter up to age 60, seven millimeters at age 70, eight millimeters at age 80, and so on. And then pericholecystic fluid finally is another important finding to look for in cholecystitis. Uh, these are um, sometimes a little bit trickier to find, some of them, than the sonographic Murphy sign and gallstones, but if you can assess for them, you can probably get a more accurate picture of what's going on with that patient's gallbladder. 
So let's uh, stop for a minute and, and talk about a couple of tips for viewing the gallbladder. Uh, if you find that rib shadows are in the way, patient can take a deep breath. That'll push the diaphragm down and bring the liver below the costal margin and hopefully the gallbladder below the costal margin as well. You can also angle the probe more obliquely. So instead of being straight up and down uh, on the patient when you have it in a sagittal or a coronal plane, angling back a bit so that the angle of the ultrasound beam is parallel to the angle of the ribs, and that'll open up a bit more rib space in between so that you can hopefully get a better view and more ultrasound energy in between the ribs instead of being blocked by the ribs. If you see hyperechoic structures inside the gallbladder, again, that can represent a stone. That's most commonly the case, but polyps are possible as well. Increase the probe frequency can sometimes demonstrate stones a little bit better and enhance the shadowing, and uh, you can also demonstrate the movement of stones. Uh, occasionally you'll see a bright hyperechoic area extending partly through the wall of the gallbladder. This is just a Phrygian cap, and if you're not familiar with the uh, Phrygians who existed during the Roman times, uh, most people are familiar with the Smurfs, similar sort of cap. So it's basically just a folding of this floppy structure that is the gallbladder. So here we have the gallbladder, and it's got a little kink in the middle of it, and that's a Phrygian cap. It doesn't represent anything aside from the fact that the gallbladder is not fully distended. Another structure that's really important to keep in mind is the duodenum. The duodenum is a fluid-filled structure that exists in the right upper quadrant right near the liver and the gallbladder. So the, gall the duodenum can look like a terrible-looking gallbladder. It can look like a gallbladder with an inflamed wall, stones, sludge, and it can fool you when you're first starting out into thinking that it looks like a pathologic structure. So here we can see the duodenum here, gallbladder here, and liver taking up the entire left side of the screen. So let's talk about a couple of different ways to tell the difference between the duodenum and the gallbladder. So the gallbladder, as we've seen throughout the first series uh, of slides here in this uh, talk, uh, has a bright white wall. And even when it's edematous, gangrenous, it's largely a bright white wall. It may be broken up with some blackness and it may be surrounded by anechoic uh, pericholocystic fluid, but the wall itself is white whereas the wall of the duodenum tends to be dark because it's mucosa and it's gut mucosa specifically. So that's typically going to have an echo texture that is dark or anechoic. Uh, the gallbladder is going to be surrounded by liver and the duodenum typically will not be surrounded by liver. It may touch the liver. There may be areas that are adjacent to the liver, but it won't be really surrounded by liver the way the gallbladder is. The middle hepatic ligament, as you recall, connects the gallbladder to the portal vein and there's no such structure connecting the uh, duodenum to any portal vein or any other structure. If you watch the gallbladder for a minute or two, it won't move. And if you watch the duodenum for a minute or two, you should see some peristalsis within it. The uh, gallbladder is a contained structure, and by that I mean if you scan back and forth through it, you'll be able to see its beginning, its middle, and its end. So you'll be able to tell that it's a sort of a self-contained cystic structure. When you follow the duodenum back towards the stomach, it'll extend for quite a ways, and then it'll extend quite a ways um, towards the jejunum. So you'll be able to see that the duodenum is not really a, a discrete sort of contained structure the way the gallbladder is. And again, finally, the middle like the middle hepatic ligament, the, um, the portal vein connects to the gallbladder, and the portal vein does not connect to the duodenum. And again, the portal vein is relatively easy to find um, if you fan up and down in a transverse plane at that X minus 7 spot away from the xiphoid process towards the right, you'll see it. Uh, and if you don't see the portal veins, uh, any of the veins inside of the liver that have a bright white wall surrounding them are portal vein tributaries. You can then trace them back to their origin at the left and right portal vein and then into the main portal vein. That should connect to the gallbladder. So here's another example where we can see liver on the left-hand side of the screen, the um, gallbladder here, much more surrounding the, the surrounded by liver than the duodenum here is, bright white wall in contrast to the dark wall of the duodenum, and, um, and connecting through the middle hepatic ligament down to the portal vein, and there's no such orientation uh, or, or anatomic connection with the duodenum. So, um, again, we've talked about the findings of the cholecystitis, fever, increased white blood cell count, gallstones, sonographic Murphy sign, uh, gallbladder wall thickening, dilated common bile duct, and pericholocystic fluid. We've gone through many of these. Let's have a look at gallbladder wall thickening. Greater than three or four millimeters is abnormal. Um, it's, uh, it's not sensitive or specific, unfortunately, for cholecystitis. You can also find it in a lot of other very common um, uh, pathologic conditions that your patients will have, like ascites, congestive heart failure, diabetes, um, uh, HIV, hepatitis, etc. 
So a normal gallbladder wall is going to be relatively thin. We're going to measure it across the wall anteriorly as we see done here. And here's a thickened gallbladder wall that we measure between the calipers here, almost 8 millimeters. Now unfortunately this particular patient has a thickened gallbladder wall but also either a lot of pericholocystic fluid or in this case it's ascites. So you really can't read uh, that it's um, a thickened gallbladder wall in that setting. Uh, here we can see uh, a, an advanced gangrenous cholecystitis with a very thickened gallbladder wall. And again, even in this advanced state of disease where there's pericholocystic fluid surrounding it, especially posteriorly here, and there's some fluid intercalated into the gallbladder wall, the wall itself, again, is still bright. And here we see, again, cholecystitis with stones and shadowing. We see thickened gallbladder wall here and here and pericholocystic fluid. So common bile duct, uh, again, greater than 6 millimeters is abnormal, and there's a reasonable differential for this as well. Uh, impacted gallstone, uh, benign stricture, pancreatic cancer. You can see this with cholangitis, chronic pancreatitis, or after a history of biliary surgery. So the normal common bile duct is demonstrated over here. We see the gallbladder here, longitudinal view, middle hepatic ligament. We see the portal vein down here, and then this structure right here is the common bile duct. The common bile duct is going to lie immediately adjacent to the portal vein along with the hepatic artery because the hepatic artery, the common bile duct, and the portal vein form the portal triad. Here's another example where we can see the main portal vein the common bile duct, and the hepatic artery. Now, how do I know which is which? Really, the most reliable way to do that is to realize that you've got two vascular structures and one um, structure that's carrying bile, so nothing's moving very quickly through it. So to put Doppler on the three structures, and the structure that doesn't have flow within it should be the common bile duct. So here we see the uh, portal vein, and then two structures, one of which is the common bile duct, one of which is the hepatic artery. And by adding Doppler, we can see a little bit lighting up inside the portal vein, lighting up inside the hepatic artery, and the common bile duct um, remains quiet from a Doppler perspective. So we measure the uh, common bile duct in a bit different way than you measure the aorta, for example. In the aorta, we measure outer wall to outer wall. Um, in the uh, case of the common bile duct, we measure the inner wall, so the inner diameter of the common bile duct. And here we see it in between the gallbladder, which is the arrow at the top of the screen. The common bile duct is between these two arrow heads, and the portal vein is this large anechoic structure behind. So sometimes you can see acute acalculus cholecystitis. It's a very common ICU uh, phenomenon, and that's an inflamed gallbladder in the absence of stones. So um, septic patients, long ICU stay, prolonged TPN, all predisposed patients to this condition. And the ultrasound findings are otherwise similar. If the patient's um, uh, alert and conscious enough to describe a sonographic Murphy sign, that will typically be present. You can see um, uh, common bile duct uh, dilatation and uh, thickening of the gallbladder wall, and uh, you just wouldn't see gallstones. So more tips and tricks, more information, tutorials, uh, additional images and videos are all available at our division website, sinaiem.us. Please contact us through the website with any uh, thoughts or comments and questions. Thank you.